How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to replace a 90 degree fuel inlet on either a Briggs & Stratton or a Tecumseh carburetor. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I know it's a little out of season, but a customer brought me one of these Craftsman single stage snowblowers here that has, I believe, a five horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. Now this snowblower has been sitting for many years, so not only does the carburetor need to be cleaned, but my customer also said that whenever he put fuel into it, the carburetor seemed like it was leaking. So I told him that there's a good chance it will also need to be rebuilt. So once I got the carburetor removed and brought it over to the workbench, one of the first things I noticed was the plastic 90 degree fuel inlet that goes into the carburetor is cracked. You guys can see it there. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that we can actually go ahead and remove that 90 degree fuel inlet and replace it with an OEM Briggs & Stratton part. And the part number for that is going to be a 692 317 and it's called a hose connector. Now before we get into replacing the fuel inlet, I wanted to show you a simple trick that we can do to see if the fuel inlet is leaking in the first place before we go ahead and replace it because a lot of you guys may have one of these where you put a new needle valve into the carburetor, you try to pressure test the carburetor but the carburetor won't pressure test. You could actually have a leak here at the 90 degree fuel inlet. So I'm going to show you just quickly how to test the fuel inlet first so that we can verify that this is in fact our leak. Now, obviously this is the problem here on ours, but yours could be different. So I want to include this. With the carburetor set up in a vise, I'm going to remove the bowl bolt right there. Now, once you have the bowl removed, we are going to remove the float pin or the float rod here, set that off to the side, and we are going to lift up and remove the float and the needle valve as well. We'll set that off to the side. Now, for this next part, you are going to need some type of pressure tester that you can use. I am using a Stenz carburetor pressure tester here. Now what you're gonna do is hook up your carburetor pressure tester like you normally would if you were testing the carburetor's needle valve for a nice seal. However, instead of having the float and the needle valve installed on the carburetor, what we're gonna do is leave it off. You're then going to take your finger, now wetting your finger sometimes helps because if it's dry, it might let a little bit of air pass, but what we're going to do is block off the hole where the needle valve would go and make its connection with the seat there. And then we're going to go over to our carburetor pressure tester and pump that up, pressurizing the air in the tube, sending it through the 90 degree fuel inlet here, into this chamber. Now we know that there's not going to be any air leaking out of where the seat is. And as long as you have a nice seal at your fuel line here and your relief valve is closed, then this chamber should pressurize and hold approximately five to 10 PSI if your 90 degree inlet does not leak. If it has a crack in it, then this will not hold pressure. You'll see the gauge go up when you pump it, and as soon as you let it go, it will fall back down because you're going to be having air escape from either a crack, like we do on this particular carburetor, or you'll have a leak somewhere around the circular seal that it makes to the brass insert, which we'll get into in a moment. Now, if you have fat, chubby fingers and you can't fit a finger into there because I know, you know, it's not that big of an area, you can install your needle valve and your float. And what I have here for demonstration purposes is a little bit of soap on the 90 degree right there. And what we're going to do, hopefully I can get this in one shot here, is we're just going to pump this up and you can see all the bubbles forming every time I pump that. So let's just say for purposes of this video that there was not a crack here that was very noticeable. You could have a leak around this seam here and these, when you install them, are not supposed to pivot. They're not supposed to be able to move and you can see that this one does in fact move obviously because it's cracked, it's opened up, so it needs to be replaced. So now that we've established that the plastic 90 degree fuel inlet leaks, how do we go about removing this so that we can install the new one? Well, to do that, you can use a pair of pliers. Because the plastic fuel inlet is cracked, it has opened itself up, which makes it easy to turn, as you guys can see. It's not supposed to do that, but basically because that's already broken, we're just going to pull that right off and it will expose the brass insert that fits snugly into the carburetor. 
Now removing this piece without the proper tools may be a little difficult. As you guys can see, this thing looks a little bit ground down and that's because I just wanna show you that grabbing it with a pair of pliers to try to twist it out, that doesn't work. So I'm gonna show you how to easily remove that brass insert from that carburetor. What I have here is a set of bolt or nut extractors in various sizes, both metric and imperial. What we're going to be using is the quarter inch extractor because this thing fits over these brass inserts very easily. Look at this. So what we're gonna do is just push that on snug and we're gonna give it a light tap with the hammer to seat it into the brass insert. Now you don't need to hit this hard. We're just looking to seat that onto that brass insert. Now these extractors have a 3 8 inch ratchet adapter and you can use a ratchet to break that loose however it may still be a little difficult to pull out so what I'm going to use is my Milwaukee cordless ratchet here we're going to plug that in and we're just going to get it to spin first and we're going to put ever so slightly an outward pressure on that and just like that we remove the brass insert so you guys saw that using a pair of pliers, it was extremely simple to remove the plastic 90 degree fuel inlet. And using our quarter inch bolt extractor, we were easily able to remove the brass insert for that fuel inlet. So at this point, the brass insert is out. And if you wanted to, I would highly recommend cleaning your carburetor now with that out, because if there's any gunk that's built up behind that inlet, in between the seat and the inlet, then it will be difficult to get out once you install the new 90 degree fuel inlet. So go ahead, clean your carburetor now. And I know that Donnie Boy 73 did a video recently showing that on some carburetors, there is in fact a screen behind some inlets on some carburetors. So super useful information shared by Donnie there. And I just wanna show you if I can get this to focus all the crap that sits in behind that fuel inlet, right? So what we would do is go ahead and remove our float rod, float and needle again. And if you have a rubber needle seat like we do right in there, go ahead and remove that as well. And then I'm going to put this into my ultrasonic cleaner, get this carburetor cleaned so that I know it's nice and clean inside of that fuel inlet area. And then we can go ahead and install the new fuel inlet. And even though this is a Briggs & Stratton carburetor, I'm going to be using my Tecumseh needle and seat tool to hook and remove the red rubber needle valve seat there. So we have that out. So now, like I said, put this in my ultrasonic cleaner. There's a larger hole here and a larger hole here for all of that debris to freely flow through so that we know this carburetor will be clean when we're ready for reassembly. So I'll get this carburetor all cleaned up in my ultrasonic cleaner and I'll bring you back for reinstallation. Okay, so I have the carburetor out of the ultrasonic cleaner and I'll try to zoom in to show you guys, but all of that gunk that was in there is now gone. So we're going to install our new 90 degree fuel inlet. Now, because this is an OEM Briggs & Stratton part, they give you a little piece of paper here that has instructions on how to not only remove the old fuel inlet, but also how to install the new one. So we have our new fuel inlet here, and basically they recommend to apply a small amount of sealing compound to the metal hub of the fuel inlet. So what we're going to do is apply a little bit of sealing compound to the outside before we press this in. Now, the second part or the fourth step is going to be to set the fuel inlet at the angle desired and press it into the carburetor using a vise. They want you to cover the jaws of the vise with a shop cloth, but I'm going to be using my wood inserts. It says do not hammer it into place and the most important part, which is the last step, do not turn the fuel inlet once it is pressed in. So I'll be using a very small amount of seal all. It is a contact adhesive and it is resistant to oil and gas. And I just put, might be hard to see, a little bit around the outside edge of that little metal insert there. So the carburetor is going to be sitting upright and we are going to take this and angle this upwards and I'm going to try to keep it as straight as possible without turning it. What I'm going to do is just try to get it in snug first so that it holds itself into position. Then we'll move the 
carburetor over to my vise and again using my wood inserts on the vise to protect the plastic insert here from cracking. We're going to slowly use the vise to pressure this inlet into the carburetor. So like I said, just pressure fit for now just to get things lined up. I'm pretty happy with how that's sitting. You know, we're not on an angle. It seems to be pretty straight in. And what we're gonna do is carefully drop the carburetor into the vise. So I'm just gonna tighten this up a little bit, get the carburetor to be held in place by the vise, and then we'll continue. So it should look a little something like that. Again, try to get it as level as possible. And then I'm just gonna put one finger here on the vise and we're going to slowly tighten that up so that we press that needle inlet into position. You guys can see we're slowly getting there. Now we're gonna slow down here because this is important. I'll try to zoom in here so you guys can see that. But basically we want to seat that brass edge up against the aluminum of the carburetor. So I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. That should be it. So what you guys are looking for here is for the brass insert there to be fully seated up against the carburetor. So that's it. Now you could let it sit like this, you know, take a little bit of pressure off of the vise, obviously, to let the seal all set up, you know, read your instructions, whatever kind of sealant you're using, or you could go ahead and put the carburetor back together. And I would personally just wait a little while before putting fuel into it just to make sure that your sealant sets up. So just like that, you have removed your old cracked leaky 90 degree fuel inlet and installed a brand new one. And now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use your carburetor pressure tester, hook it up the same way we did before, go ahead and plug this hole. Obviously I don't have a new seat installed yet, so I can't install the float with the needle valve in there. I'm waiting on a carb kit for this, but I did have this part, so I wanted to get that done. But if I were to put my finger over here and plug that hole and pressure test just the inlet, this thing is gonna seal up perfectly. And just to show you guys, I have wet the tip of my finger. I'm holding the hole where the needle seat would be. I have my carburetor pressure tester hooked up to our new 90 degree fuel inlet. And you guys can see right here, we are holding just over five PSI. So that needle inlet is sealing and that's a job well done. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Like I said, extremely simple as long as you have the right tools which in this case is going to be a pair of pliers and a quarter inch bolt extractor. Like I said, Briggs & Stratton, Tecumseh, they're pretty much all designed the same. If they have those plastic 90 degree fuel inlets, they all have that little brass or metal insert that goes into the carburetor and makes a snug connection. And as you saw in this video, removing and installing one is incredibly simple. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.